day, everyone, across North America. This is Jason Metcalf with Sony's Professional Solutions of America, filling in today for John Garmendi. I would like to welcome you all to another in our series of Tech Tuesday AV Solutions webinars. These webinars were started in response to the COVID crisis so that our customers, resellers, integrators, and consultants can stay informed and up-to-date on Sony's latest products and solutions. Today's webinar is part of the application and technology focus series during the month of August. Today, we'll be talking about our Bravia professional displays and related products that can support your signage and conferencing needs. Just a few items of housekeeping, as in previous webinars, there will be an opportunity for Q&A, so please submit your questions via the GoToMeeting question panel. Uh, please also watch the chat as I will post uh, links to information referenced during the webinar there, including a link to our YouTube playlist where you can view all of our past webinars, including this one, which will be posted by the end of this week. Joining me today is Anthony Semprano, Product Manager for Professional Bravia Displays, and Gene Lewis, Marketing Manager for Professional Bravia Displays. Take it away, Anthony. Okay, um, thank you, Jason. Let me uh, introduce myself visually so you can see who I am. Um, and I'll advance to the next slide here. Hang on a second. So today's agenda is our software solution. So we have three sign, uh, three different solutions. Two of them are for signage and one of them is for meeting room applications. So these are all developed by Sony. Um, they run on the HTML5 platform, their HTML5 uh, applications. So let's get started. Um, eliminate my webcam there and we'll get started here. The, the first one is what we refer to as simple media player. and it is a um, USB player that uh, is perfect for standalone type application. So I want, I want to go back a slide to this scene here. This is the scene of a coffee shop and one display that has um, the specials or, or the menu or the featured items. And that's really where this is intended. So that content isn't going to change very often. And um, it's a one display in the whole coffee shop that, that's advertising their their uh, specials. So in that type of scene or that type of application, this is an ideal solution. So the standalone display is you know the, the target where there's no network connection. Um, like all of our displays, and you're going to see this several times through the presentation, there is no set top box. So it, it runs directly off of the displays HTML5 platform. The media player is for images, video, HTML, and background audio. And it also displays schedules and signage in full screen. And I want to emphasize schedule. So this is simply not a uh, slideshow viewer. It, it actually can do playlists and schedules. So all of that is done with the IR remote control. And if you look at the th uh, three simple steps at the bottom. Um, there's two folders on the uh, download. Uh, one is the application folder where the application resides. The other one is a media folder. And so you add your content to the media folder. And then once that's installed into the display, you use the IR remote to create a playlist and then assign that playlist to a schedule. So very nice solution. It's, it's free and it's intended for those um, one one type uh, standalone displays in a coffee shop or some uh, retail type environment. Now Bravia signage is the step up from there. This is a network solution, and show you the uh, bullet points here that support this this uh, features. Uh, so it's a licensed software. The license is for the display side software. Um, it supports multiple displays, up to 600 displays. That's as many as they could uh, simulate in Japan uh, on the network was 600. 
install the software to the PC server and display. So there's two different installations. One is for the PC server that you see here, and the other one is an installation that goes into each one of the displays. And that's the, the license part of it, is the software that installs into the displays. In this diagram, you can see that there's a signage server and an operating PC. This is to illustrate that the, um, uh, the Bravia signage server and the operating PC can be two different uh, devices. It could be one in the same, or it could be two different ones. And you would just browse from the operating PC to the signage server display and manage the system. Um, you can control all the displays from one GUI. And the one-click installation for Bravia signage server, what, what that means is there's several components that get installed onto the PC. Um, MongoDB, which is a database, Apache server, which is a web server, and then the uh, Bravia signage server application itself. So instead of having to install each one of those individually, you uh, start a batch file and it installs all three of those together. So the key here, uh, like the other solutions that we have, is that there's no external box signage player that's required for this. So the, the software runs directly on the display and it offers a network signage solution. This is a look at the functionality. And if you were to go through a, a workflow type of description, whenever you install the displays on the, the network, you use the display management tool and the power management function and set up the displays either as portrait displays or landscape displays or in some logical grouping, um, first floor, second floor, um, cafeteria, library, whatever logical name you would like to give to it and you assign them to the groups. Um, from there, you would add content to the contents library. So contents could be video files, JPEG images, HTML uh, folders with content in it. Once you have populated the contents library with the content you want to use, you add that to a playlist, and then you schedule the playlist to play out on the groups that you want them to play play on. Um, interrupter delivery is uh, just like it sounds. It's a way to interrupt the current schedule with a new piece of content. Um, the most obvious uh application for this would be uh emergency type messages where you would stop the scheduled playlist and uh, give a message across one display or many displays depending on where the incident is going on the other feature of of this tool is the content creation area this gives you several different templates and divides the screen into regions. And you can add content to each region and then export that as an HTML folder, which then becomes part of your content and then add it to a playlist. So that allows you to use regions of the display. Now, Bravia Meeting is the one that, the meat of this presentation is on Bravia Meeting, which is the uh, meeting room application for uh, and uh, optimizing meeting use. So what is Bravia Meeting? It's a scalable and extensible meeting room display solution. And these are kind of the issues that it tries to solve. Um, people go to a meeting and they leave the display on. Um, and so it just sits there and consumes power. Um, you're not sure when the meeting room's available. So we have the ability to put a schedule, which I'll describe in a second on the screen. Um, the meeting doesn't finish on time because one of the presenters is, is going on and on and extending his uh, allocated time. So there's a built-in timer that helps manage that, uh, that thing. And then as far as like, interconnections, um, sometimes people have to fool around with the remote trying to find the right input or uh, adjust volume and things like that. So these are the kind of the issues that it, it tries to solve. And there's two um, ways to access the Bravia meeting application. One of them is free and it's embedded in the 
pro settings and pro mode operation of the display. So in the pro settings menu, there's a section called startup services. That's where you would enable some of the applications that are built into the display, like the Crestron connected application is one of the startup services. The other startup services is, is the Bravia meeting free. So once you've enabled that and installed it, the display will reboot and come up in the Bravia meeting application. So that free application includes the auto input switching, the auto power off, the present time, presentation timer, and the, um, the standby screen. The paid part of it allows you to manage all the displays over a network. It adds some additional features like uh, power scheduling. Um, that's where the room booking uh, system integration is, is enabled. Um, there's an interactive whiteboard as a function of that paid version. And also there's uh, application for image sharing for wireless um, presentation on the display from a laptop. So this is more detail. That slide that I just was on was more of a summary. This is more detail of what is available in the free versus the paid application. So you can see that the far uh, Left-hand column is the, the difference between free and paid, and the dotted line is the distinguishing differentiator there. Um, so the software is built into the display or it's installed with the paid version. The BM1 server software is part of what you get whenever you um, purchase the software, and then the client app. Um, hardware side, any Bravia Android TV will support this functionality. Um, the Windows PC or Synology NAS. Synology is a third party company that has put our applications on their uh, package store, it's called. And so you can download the application directly onto the Synology. So it's a network attached storage, but it also has an operating system that can run these applications. So it's a way to implement this if you don't want to use a Windows PC. And then the final uh, portion is the client app, which is downloaded from the server. It uh, either has a Windows version or a Mac version, and that's where you can do the collaboration in the, with the display in the meeting room. Um, capture and send, um, get displays, image, pointers, and uh, remote operation. So once again, to reemphasize this, no set-top box is needed. And Actually, when you think about it, you don't even need the remote control. And in these COVID era, and people worried about sanitation and touching things, you basically don't need to use the IR remote control. So that's kind of a nice advantage of this. All right, so with the paid application, we have the custom three key points, the customizable home screen, the simple operation, and the handy collaboration tools. And I'll go into each one of these in a little bit more detail. So one of the things I want to point out, maybe when we've demonstrated this uh, in trade shows and things like that, people assume that this image is being generated by some external device. And it, it's not. It's actually part of the application. So what you're looking at is this home screen of the display. So normally on the home screen, you see you know your apps and your inputs and, and those uh, icons on the home screen. That gets replaced with this default image for the free version, or you can change this background image with the paid version. But in either version, these items that you see highlighted can be changed. So you can display the date and time if you want to or not. On the standby screen, you can show the subtext, the room name is, is one example of what can be displayed here. You can also use a welcome message for a client, for example. And then you see the room booking integration on the right hand side. And those are integrated with G Suite, um, Exchange, and Office 365. So, in addition to the images and the video that you can run on the background or this home screen and when i say standby screen what i mean is in, in this case there's no signal attached right it, this is what you would see instead of walking into a meeting room and seeing a 
black screen, a blank screen, or maybe it says HDMI up in the corner, you would have an actual useful screen. It welcomes a client or identifies what room you're in or gives the wireless access point, uh, SSID and instructions. So that's, that's the purpose of that. You can also show a web page, um, either in half screen or in full screen. So down at the, this bottom graphic here shows uh, it being used in the half screen, and this is showing it being used in the full screen. The simple operation includes these things like auto power on and off. So it wakes on signal, basically. It's a setting that uh, is in pro mode by itself, but the Bravia meeting application you know, uh, utilizes all these different functions into one package. Auto input switch um, is another function that uh, allows the display to detect the last input and switch to that input. So a second presenter can attach his laptop. Once he disconnects his connection from the display, it'll revert back to its original HDMI signal. And then with the remote, uh, server application, that way you can change all these settings from remotely over the network. The collaboration tools include the interactive whiteboard. Um, you can annotate over HDMI, and then you can capture those and, and download it to your laptop as a JPEG image. So this is an example of that. So. Um, one presenter is showing his laptop screen on on the uh, on the display. Um, another per, uh, person in the meeting um, annotated on top of that, um, and now the two other presenter or attendees in the meeting have downloaded that to their their PC as a JPEG. Um, it also supports uh, multiple pointers. So if you are uh, analyzing or debating about uh, some detailed content you can each each uh, user in the meeting room can point to an area on on the screen and, and talk about that area specifically and then as far as the mirroring goes it's it's done with the passcode so once you download the client app to your pc or, or mac you'll get a uh, passcode well, the passcode is displayed on the screen and you have a dialog box on the PC where you enter that passcode and then your PC image is displayed on the screen. And that passcode changes every 30 minutes automatically. So it's kind of a, a secure type of uh, feature where it changes the passcode so people can't interrupt the meeting. So what is necessary to make the Bravia meeting application work? Of course, you need the Bravia TV. Um, the professional display or one of our crossover displays. Um, the touch overlay is optional if you want to do the annotation. Um, that's uh, required, but it, it's not necessary. Of course, you need the network for the, the paid networkable version, or you can use the free application um, without, without the network. And then the license for the display. So that's the, that's the purchase item. And then the server application is basically free. And that is supported on uh, Windows, Linux, and the uh, Synology NAS systems. This is a system diagram. So you can see that there's a uh, Bravia meeting server somewhere on the network. Um, there's a Wi-Fi router, which allows these devices to wirelessly share content to the displays. And then you have the displays. In this case, they show it in uh, three different rooms. This is a look at the management console. Um, you can see that there's, in this example here, there's two displays on the network. You can see their IP address. You can check their status. You can control each one of them individually or a, as a group, as all. And then you can change inputs remotely. And this is a look at an example system using 10 55-inch BZ35F displays. And these prices are approximate this prices. Um, you can see that there's 10 displays, um, the $300 uh, software license per display, 
and in this example, we're using the Synology NAS. Um, it, this particular NAS requires a hard drive, so that's why you see the hard drive there. But that whole system for 10 displays is around $17,000. We have a couple accessories to support the Bravia meeting application. Um, one of them is the touchscreen that I mentioned. Um, it's a 10 point multi-touch touch overlay. Um, it's fairly simple to install and set up. You just attach it over the, uh, the display screen and there's some brackets that you attach in the back and it has a USB um, pigtail cable that you connect to the display's USB ports. Um, there's one series that we introduced with the BZ35F. Uh, we're transitioning now to a new series, which is called the BZ40H. So the BZ35F has the four touch overlays available in these sizes, 55, 65, 75, and 85. The new BZ40H touch overlay will only have the 55, 65, and 75 sizes that are supported. The other accessory for Bravia meeting is this USB camera called the FWA CE100. It's intended to be used with the Bravia meeting application and the Bravia display. And it enables video conferencing function um, from Bravia to Bravia video conferencing. So if you had two of these set up in a facility, you can conference with each other, or two of them on the same network, you can conference with each other. So this, this is kind of a first step as a uh, video conferencing solution. Um, other applications are being looked at as potential uh, uses for running on Bravia, but today we're, we're just uh, Bravia meeting to Bravia meeting applications. And then this is the last slide, um, which is the summary of, of what we've been discussing. So we have the BZ series, which is our professional uh, dedicated B2B model. The sizes range from 43 to 85. Um, they're competitively priced. They all support uh, wireless and wired network. RS-232 is built in. Um, Visa mount, import, export by USB and so on and so forth. They're TAA compliant, um, Crestron Connected is supported. The key point with the BZ35 and BZ40H series is they're, they're 24 seven. Energy Star is, um, we had it on the 35F and uh, Energy Star updated their standard to 8.0 and so we had to this continue Energy Star on the BZ35F, but with the new BZ40H, we're able to pick that back up again. So the BZ40H models will support Energy Star 8.0, and that'll be uh, cut in in October timeframe. All of our models have um, a system on chip. They're Android smart TVs, so they are, have the uh, ability to run applications both in Android and HTML. The ones I've described today are all HTML applications. There's also third-party Android applications that can run on the Bravia. And we back up our product with a three-year warranty. We have a optional five-year extension, and we also include advanced replacement as part of that warranty. So that's the presentation. Um, and I'd like to open it up now for any questions. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, we do We do have a couple. Um, Skip asks if the software license, uh, I'm assuming for the uh, meeting software, is a one-time fee or uh, does it require an annual subscription? They're all one-time fee. They, they're, they're one per display. So you multiply you know, by the number of displays, but then that's it, it's a one-time fee there's no renewal or subscription great um paul asks if uh the um uh if we will work with robin room scheduler so i'm not sure if that's for the bravia the panel itself or with for the meeting software but yeah i'm not familiar with robin room scheduler i, I would have to ask and investigate that 
that one. It's, I assume that's a third party application. It's not a Sony application. So I would have to check into, into that. Okay. Um, yeah, we can get, uh, Paul, we can get back to you on that. Um, uh, Chris asks if you can use Wi-Fi to direct connect to the devices. Yes. So in the Bravia meeting application, that's uh, included as part of the feature set, but there's also a feature called uh, direct access. So you can uh, Wi-Fi direct, it's called, and, and you can wirelessly connect directly. Okay, great. Um, uh, Dave asks if Wi-Fi can be, be disabled. Yes, it can. Um, so there's three different things that can be done to disable wireless. It can be turned off in the menu simply. It also can be hidden when you start pro mode. So when the Wi-Fi on off uh, switch is in the normal settings menu. When you start pro mode, the normal settings menu gets hidden. So you no longer have access to the Wi-Fi on off button anymore. And if that's not enough, you can also pin protect the pro settings mode so that only an administrator or somebody that has the pin can access the pro settings mode in order to turn on or off Wi-Fi. So three different layers of disable. Okay, great. Um, Mark asks if uh, the Bravia meeting free software is uh, bundled with the Bravias or if it has to be downloaded separately. No, it's it's embedded in the display. So in, in the pro settings menu, there's a menu item called uh, startup services. In startup services, that's where you'll find the Bravia meeting free application. So you simply turn it on, it will prompt you to install. You'll install the application, the display will reboot, and you now have Bravia meeting running on your display. Okay, great. Um, Zachary asks, um, he said he read on our website that the University of Central Florida is using um, Bravia meeting free, and he's asking if you could discuss that project. Sure, it was uh, a request from them. Uh, it, it came as a request from them. They didn't want to see the standby screen. There's a screen saver that comes on automatically on the Bravia when no signal is detected for a period of time. I believe it's 15 minutes. It'll start showing a series of images that are you know beautiful artwork and different types of images um, they didn't want to use that they wanted to use something that was more useful and they didn't want to use the ir remote control in the breakout rooms and uh, there was a couple other things that they wanted to do well once i saw their request i said well bravia meeting does all of these so i introduced them to the bravia meeting free application um, and they tested it and they said, well, this, this is exactly what we want. So it had the automatic switching feature. It was able to display a image of something that was useful just instead of a black screen or random images. Um, the development team in Japan um, tweaked the Bravia meeting free application slightly by allowing you to customize those background images. And we did that for uh, UCF and we could do that for other customers as, as well. So that default image that you saw of the buildings is, is what, that's the default image of the Bravia meeting free application. So they wanted to change that to, to have some uh, campus messaging. And so we uh, did that for them. Awesome. Um, Ed asks, and actually has two questions. Um, uh, do we offer training for the end user for signed software? And uh, is, he's also asking if the 40 series replaces the 35 series or will be uh, in addition to? It will be in addition to for a period of time and eventually will phase out. So there's six models in the BZ35F. There's a 43 and 49 that will stay in the lineup through this year. And then the four other sizes, which are 55, 65, 70, and 85, will transition to the BZ40H. 
So the BZ35F 30, 43 and 49 will, will stay in the lineup. The other ones will overlap a little bit and then eventually everything will go to the 40H. Great, and he was also curious if we offer training for end user training for the science software. Yeah, we, we can do it. It's not, not a problem, we do it all the time. Great. Um, Stan asks, how do you access pro mode on the Bravia screen? So there's been a couple different methods to do that. Uh, a couple years ago, we were only able to do that with a key sequence on the IR remote, which was unpublished. And so you kind of had to have one of your account managers or technical support advise you how to do that. With the BZ35F, um, we introduced what they call the uh, Pro Mode Tool. So it's an application that sits on the apps menu and allows you to access the pro settings and pro mode and normal mode just by using the IR remote with the apps menu on the screen. Um, that was limited to the BZ series. Um, now in the new models for FY20, they've actually added that into all the different models. So there's a pro mode tool now available across all Bravia models that you can utilize very easily without uh, using the key sequence of the IR remote. But one point of caution though, once you start pro mode, all your menus are hidden. So there's a way to enable certain applications to stay on the apps menu while you're in pro mode. So a, a lot of people, they see the pro mode tool, they say, oh, this is you know, what I want to use. They start pro mode and now they want to go back and change something. And they're like, well, how do I get out of this? Well, that's why you enable the pro mode tool to be available in pro mode. So it's there for you to use. Now, in some cases, you don't want your end user or the, or to, to access that. Um, in, in that case, you, you hide it you know, as it is by default. It's up to you. Okay, great. Um, uh, Johnny asks, what would a typical bundle for a low cost video conferencing solution be comprised of? Well, there's the display plus the camera. The camera, I'm not exactly sure the list price, it's around 200 some dollars for the camera. And then the software itself, which is 300. So display plus 200 plus 300 approximately okay well times two right we get a video conference with somebody so you have to have a second configuration All right um steve asks if the uh, software is a one-to-one -one ratio so one one license per display yes okay okay um i think that's all of our questions uh if you did ask a question that wasn't answered, um, just note that uh, you know we have all those and we'll be getting in touch with you. Um, and uh, we did want to thank everyone for attending. Um, remember that this webinar and all of our past webinars are available on our YouTube channel and I'll, I'll post the link to that playlist again in the chat. Um, Next Tuesday, please join us for a presentation from our uh, medical solutions team on patient monitoring systems. Um, those uh, our PTZ cameras and nucleus imaging platform have been incredibly popular in that area. Um, also, uh, be aware that when this webinar closes, you will see an exit survey pop up. We would appreciate your feedback uh, so that we can continue to improve these presentations. Thank you all, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.